We're now happy to have with us again the leader of the United States Copyright Office, Ms. Mary Beth Peters. Uh, she has been a frequent speaker and writer on this and other related subjects, and is the author of the General Guide to the Copyright Act of 1976. And we welcome you at this time, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Uh, Chairman Conyers, Ranking Member Smith, and members of the committee, I appreciate the opportunity to testify before you today about the potential impact of the proposed Google Books settlement on United States copyright law and policy. I am familiar with the terms of the settlement. Indeed, my office has thoroughly reviewed the entire settlement agreement. While aspects of the settlements have merit, for example, the creation of a registry which facilitates licensing of, of books for online uses and certain provisions to benefit the blind and visually impaired, key parts of the settlement are fundamentally... Excuse me, would you pull your microphone closer? Okay. Okay. Key parts of the settlement are fundamentally at odds with the law. They impinge on exclusive rights granted to authors and other rights holders. My written testimony fully describes my concerns, and I apologize for not submitting the testimony within the time limits provided by the committee, thereby basically making it not available for members to read before this hearing. In my oral testimony, I'm going to focus on only two points. One is the settlement agreement creates what is, in effect, a compulsory license that allows Google to continue to scan millions of books into the future and permits Google to engage in a number of activities that were not actually part of the lawsuit and that are indisputably acts of copyright infringement. For example, offering full text displays and the sale of downloads. Compulsory licenses are the domain of Congress, not the courts. When such licenses are created, it is usually the result of marketplace failure. You've heard that there is marketplace failure from some today. But it's after full public debate. Moreover, they are narrowly tailored and applied to all users who meet the terms and conditions of the license. By permitting Google to engage in a wide array of new uses of most books in existence, the settlement would alter the landscape of copyright law which is also the role of Congress and not the courts, for millions and millions of rights holders of out-of-print books. The out-of-print default rules would flip copyright on its head by allowing Google to engage in extensive new uses without the consent of the copyright owner. In my view, making a mockery of Article I of the Constitution that anticipates that authors shall be granted exclusive rights. Moreover, the settlement would jeopardize the efforts of Congress to enact comprehensive orphan works legislation that would benefit all users. Courts have acknowledged that when dealing with new technologies, only Congress has the authority and the institutional ability to accommodate the competing interests that are implicated. This committee has con spent considerable time and given considerable thought as to how to resolve the orphan works problem. The settlement undermines Congress's ability to determine how to address this issue and is at odds with the approach that you have been considering up to now. The agreement also has serious international implications. Foreign governments, as, many, as well as many foreign authors and publishers, have objected to the settlement and suggested that the settlement may violate certain international obligations of the United States. It is troubling that many foreign works that have never been made available by their authors or publishers in the United States would be swept into a class action simply because one copy was located in a library and that library permitted Google to scan its books. In conclusion, Congress frames and defines the scope of the rights and the remedies of copyright owners. I do believe that the proposed settlement agreement seeks to usurp that role by addressing policy issues that go well beyond the case or controversy identified by the plaintiffs in litigation. I look forward to your questions, and as always, the office stands ready to assist the committee as it considers the issues posed by the settlement agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now pleased to hear from Randall Picker, the Leftman Professor of Commercial Law at the University of Chicago. 
Uh, his expertise is in laws relating to intellectual property, competition policy, and regulated industries. We welcome you. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> Ranking Member Smith, and members of the committee. I, I am, Mr. Chairman, I think, as you put it, the only professional mousetrap user on the panel. So that's what I do for a living. Uh, my office at the law school is in the library. Faculty offices surround the library. I literally walk from my office into the stack, sometimes quite literally. Um, so uh, uh, these kinds of tools are the things that make my job um, a wonderful job. Uh, and notwithstanding having f access to one of the great university libraries, um, I regard Google Book Search uh, as a wonder. Uh, it's a fabulous product. Uh, I, I have an unnatural liking for it. Um, uh, I'm doing some research into the, some business practices in the early 1900s, and it's, it's amazing what you can do with it. So the points that Mr. Drummond makes and that Mr. Dr. Marr makes about how it expands access, absolutely right. It's fabulous, uh, and I applaud the product. Notwithstanding that, um, I think the role that I'm trying to play here in, in the paper I wrote is, is to figure out how to improve the product. Um, uh, the fact that it's a great product doesn't mean it might not have problems. The fact that it's a great product doesn't mean it might not engage in behavior which is anti-competitive. And it's the job of antitrust regulators to sort through that uh, and to make improvements. Um, indeed, Google thinks of itself as a